You might have noticed on this channel, I try to take complicated issues that I learn about, like how the state works, how capitalism and socialism work, how propaganda works, and simplify them all so that I can explain the basics in under an hour. Since I keep things simple, people watching can realize for themselves the truth or advisability of what I'm saying. When I explained why politicians lie a few weeks ago, you don't need a deep understanding of politics to understand my points, like how politicians are compelled by incentives and circumstances to lie, build prisons, strengthen borders, and go to war. When I say people should be free, others agree, at least in principle. If I'm stating fact rather than observation or philosophy, they can check my links, or they can look it up, or they can tell me I'm wrong, and all those are fine. Now, I can be honest and say what I think on here for the most part, because even if you disagree with my analysis, you're probably at least sympathetic to my ideals. You might think I'm naive for wanting freedom for everyone, but is it really an ignoble, undesirable aspiration? No. And can you really argue against my points, or is it just a matter of opinion? But not everyone cares about freedom. Some are much more keen on power. It's not the same. Freedom means doing what you want. Power means compelling others to do what you want them to. People have found many ways to attain and retain power, but since the desire for power is inherently selfish, they lie about their intentions. Wanting power, which includes the power to just get away with being shitty to people, could be a pretty simple thing. But instead of admitting it, people complicate things. They might say they were just joking. It's ironic racism, you see. No, no, I'm just asking questions. Just playing the devil's advocate. They write long articles crying about pronouns, instead of just saying they don't like trans and non-binary people. They write whole books about how important it is to stop crime and illegal immigration and fund the police, because they know dark-skinned people are the prime targets of law enforcement. That's where dog whistles come in. Dog whistles are words, phrases, or some other shibboleth that masks one's true intentions, but is recognized by a certain group, so they know what the speaker really means. You know, like, only a dog can hear a dog whistle, hmm? Hmm? and neo-Nazis know when you say globalist, you really mean Jew. Of course, not everyone using a dog whistle is necessarily right-wing, they might just be getting manipulated. Dog whistles are especially common among the right wing, for the main reason that their goals and intentions are not popular enough to declare them openly and not get ostracized. They want to remain among the people, sending out signals for other right wingers to pick up on while retaining plausible deniability. What? I didn't mean anything racial. Where did I say anything racist? Right, you didn't say it, you just hinted. And that's enough to discern your meaning. An example of that went viral this week. Did you see it? What do you think he meant by woke? If you're new to dog whistles, I'll explain. He meant black. No black Santa. Just a lily white Christmas for Ryan and his lily white family. Naturally, he doesn't want to say it out loud, but to Ryan, white is the correct color for Santa, and anything different is a sign of white people losing prominence. Lee Atwater, advisor to Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush, explained dog whistles in his time in an anonymous account to a reporter. You start out in 1954 by saying this racial slur. By 1968, you can't say it. It hurts you backfires. So you say stuff like forced busing, states' rights, and all that stuff. You're getting so abstract now, you're talking about cutting taxes, and all these things you're talking about are totally economic things, and a byproduct is, of them is blacks get hurt worse than whites. And subconsciously, maybe that's a part of it. I'm not saying that. Yeah. 
right? But I'm saying that if it's getting that abstract and that coded, that we're doing away with the racial problem one way or the other. You follow me? Because obviously sitting around saying, we want to cut this, is much more abstract than even the busing thing, and a hell of a lot more abstract than the slur. So dog whistles might seem to have nothing to do with the subject. Cut taxes doesn't sound like lock up more black people, does it? Which is the genius of dog whistles. Nowadays, they might look more like this. If you're not familiar with dog whistles, it just reads like a simple statement of patriotism, which is bad enough. But if you recognize that first sentence is almost the same as the neo-Nazi 14 words, look it up if you don't know, then you know who Marge's target audience is. In the past few years, the right wing has seized on the word woke to mean everything they don't like. You'll notice how few specifics they ever use. Learning from books that aren't considered classics? Woke! Telling the truth about history? Woke! Talking about racism? Woke! Thinking trans people should be a part of public life? Woke! But that's not how they say it. They just dismiss you as woke, because you don't like racism and transphobia as much as they do. Richard Dawkins recently tweeted this blog post entitled Progressive Professors, The Root of All Evil. Neither his tweet nor his link say what's actually wrong with any of this. The article uses words like noxious, though it doesn't say how these words are noxious, they're just bad. It uses self-righteous and narcissism to describe anyone who uses any of this language, even though the whole root of this article is self-righteousness. It complains that one anti-abortion organization started saying birthing people instead of mothers for the sake of accuracy. Of course, without saying what's wrong with that. Oh no, not recognizing that trans men and non-binary people exist. This is the end of the world as we know it. But I feel fine. The article laments that an ACLU director said, First Amendment protections are disproportionately enjoyed by people of power and privilege. And, um, that's wrong? Or is the problem that people are recognizing it and saying it out loud? Stop analyzing and interpreting the world in a way that diminishes my power! The article then claims these words are all euphemisms, which they are not, dog whistles are, to defend the indefensible, though nothing this guy is complaining about is indefensible, and then says, Putin uses euphemisms to justify war, you know. Okay. Their students, however, constitute an unmitigated disaster intellectually and politically, and probably economically and philosophically and medically, as they enter the workforce. They might be the American version of the old Soviet apparatchiks, functionaries who carry out party policies. Oh, so like employees, but the evil Soviet version. Maybe even the Nazi Germany version, if we're feeling really rhetorical. Intellectually, they fetishize buzzwords. Yes, I get off hearing those buzzwords, too. That they plaster over everything. Oh, are they not useful words? Or do you just not like what they convey? It's such a joke that you can write all this rhetoric and have nothing to say. It's pure ivory tower speculation on people you don't know. This is make up a guy for elitist professors. Whether or not Dawkins realizes it, academia has always been a bastion of conservative thought. All hierarchical social institutions are inherently conservative. It's only in the past three generations or so professors have had the freedom to question the propaganda, and there still aren't enough of them doing it. When you question, you examine, criticize, take apart, and maybe demand change. People who have it made under the present system, like Dawkins, fear change. 
so they talk about what they're afraid of, dress it up in language to make people with nothing to lose think they have something to lose now, and claim it's all leading to some unspecified calamity. Speaking of having it made, Elon Musk responded to Dawkins with this tweet, repeating the name of the blog post instead of adding anything, presumably to indicate to his followers they too should fear learning and questioning. Like, what does it even mean? What does evil mean here? Did he just forget to type woke instead? If I ever saw people like this tweeting facts and solutions to problems like war and homelessness, you know, solutions as opposed to terrible ideas based on zero knowledge of the situation, I might actually think they were sincere. But since guys like Elon and Richard don't care about human suffering, just their own privileged positions at the top of economic and academic hierarchies, the only evil is the one that threatens their power. But don't bother calling them out for their saying the quiet part quietly. Not only does it mean you're woke, and that's bad, but their fanboys will also call you politically correct, hypersensitive SJW, etc., 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 which all mean the same thing as woke. Because who needs to admit and justify your beliefs when you can just grab an insult from the insult box? So what does it mean when they say woke? It means black and brown people, gay and trans people, Feminism, police abolition, anti-fascism, wearing masks, anyone and anything the right wing doesn't like. So when you see a tweet like this, don't expect an explanation. It's Elon signaling, whistling if you like, that he's right wing. That's it. What does it mean when they say critical race theory? It means black people and indigenous people. Now you see what it means when bigots say they want to ban critical race theory. What does it mean when they say pronouns or gender ideology? It means trans people. That's it. When they say, I don't care about pronouns, I don't believe in gender identity, they mean they're bigoted toward trans people. And by the way, it's bigotry, not hate. Remember, when you don't want to say what you really mean, you complicate things. So they can't say they want to kill all trans people or just force them out of public life entirely. So they say, gender ideology is poisoning our children's minds. Sounds complicated and scary. It's a plot by evil people. What does it mean? Trans people. They want to ban gender ideology because they want to ban trans people. So what do you think Laverne Spicer means here? I think it's her way of saying there is no place in the United States for trans people. The right wing has even invented a huge child grooming panic they're using to carry out mass murder. When they say groomers, listen carefully, you can hear them whispering, trans people. And none of this is getting into the huge list of words the right wing uses to mean Jews. Big parts of the right wing and smaller but existing parts of the left believe the Jews control, uh, like, you know, the banks and governments and money and media and probably everything. Control is the key word they use, not own. Owning stuff is normal under capitalism. Control sounds sinister, huh? Of course, there is no the Jews. There are just Jews, some of whom are rich, some of whom are poor, some in between. So this whole belief is garbage, like all right-wing nonsense. But if you know the dog whistles, you can hear them. So stay up to date on the symbols, words, and phrases being used by the right wing, and you might avoid getting fooled and dedicating your life to a lie.